My name is Paul Evans and I am the CEO of the Low Cost Travel Group. Well, I've always lived overseas, travelled all my life. Um, I was a Club 1830 rep about 25 years ago. I, um, I, was, um, I then uh, was at Saga and then I, was, uh, I spent 13 years at Air Tours My Travel, ended up as a director of My Travel. I then became MD of First Choice Holidays. So I was deputy MD of Going Places in the middle of that. And uh, then I, I'm a non-exec director of Eurogroup Hotels. I'm the chairman of Resort Hopper and A to B Travel Extras. And I set up the Low Cost Travel Group seven years ago, eight years ago. Actually, I left university and, uh, and I saw an advert for Portuguese speaking rep. And I really knew, I, as I said, I've been traveling all my life. I didn't, I didn't know nothing about package holidays. I've never been on package holidays in my life. And I applied for this job at Club 1830 that I knew nothing about. And then I, and I had a complete ball. So I traveled around America and Asia and what have you. And then I came back and there was a, my brother was working at a zoo and the keeper had got killed by the elephants and they wanted an elephant keeper. So I applied for that. And I ended up working as an elephant keeper for two years, looking after these six, six elephants. But it got so dangerous that in the end, I, uh, I, it was down in Kent that uh, I applied to Saga, that, that used to be down in Kent nearby. And, uh, and I wrote to the chairman and I said, I'm an old Etonian elephant keeper who speaks four languages. Uh, I really like to work in travel. And he saw me and gave me the job in buying. Yeah, we were set up in 2004. We're now 500 million. We're moving 2 million passengers. We're in 10 countries. We've got four businesses. We've got low-cost beds, which is the bed bank, uh, which operates in 10 countries. We've got low-cost holidays, which is also in about, I don't even know, I think 10 countries. And we've got the partnerships. So we operate uh, EasyJet Holidays, Apollo, which is Quoni, and we also operate uh, last-minute package holidays. And then we own the software system called Intuitive, which also caters to about 20 customers. So it's growing very fast, growing about 150 million a year. And um, we're a top 10 UK website, top eight UK website. And, um, and opening offices, we just opened in America. We launched Denmark this week. We'll launch Finland on the 1st of November. And we're just going dum dum dum. You know, the, the core skill set was buying, hotel buying. That was the core skill set. So that will always remain the core skill set of the company, that and technology. And I think that um, we're going to roll out low-cost beds across the world because we really think that that has got legs. Um, we've got 250,000 hotels on our website and uh, we think we've got a fantastic system. And so we're going to offer that to the trade. But we're also in parallel. Where, where, where the market allows continue to grow low-cost holidays because that's a, quite a powerful brand in its own right. Uh, and, and if we can find some partnerships where people want to use our technology and our stock and some of the expertise that we have in-house, either in, in terms of buying or in terms of digital distribution, we would be happy to help. We've got three very strong partners in Quoni, EasyJet and Last Minute. And, um, uh, and we want to maximize the return for them. I mean, I think everybody talks about shorter booking periods. We know that you know, you know, the 14 at holiday went to 10 and the 10 went to 8 and the 8 is probably now 6. I think in recessions you tend to get the city business tends to drop. So the, that second holiday tends to drop. You're seeing the movement towards all inclusive. Yeah, it's now 48% of the business. I think that, that is doing some damage in resorts, but actually the economics work at the end of the day. That's what people want, particularly in, in, in a recession. I think that the movement online we all know about versus the high street. I mean, we see tremendous bookings between 6 in the evening and 9 o'clock at night. Those are your peaks. You also see tremendous bookings on a Sunday night and, you know, when, when, when the traditional high street isn't open. Um, I think there's more research. I think the growth of the, uh, com the, the, the meta comparison sites and particularly the review sites, um, it's interesting to see the review sites effectively uh, monetize their, their that they're offering, and I think you know the trip advisors and holiday checks and and, and other review sites, um, I think are growing in importance. And I think the customer feedback and interaction on the site is growing. And the question is, how do you do you control it? Do you leave it as a free for all? How can you monetize it? All of those issues become, I think, very very relevant. Um, I think that you know there is, and, and I'll repeat it. There's just not enough money for mistakes. 
There's not enough margin for mistakes. And I think that, therefore, the automization, the, the insistence on quality overseas, because low cost is absolutely not low quality. You know, it's a bit like a, you know, our, from, from, from the low cost travel group's point, point of view, we are just neutral. We are neutral. We'll sell a two star hotel, but actually, we'd rather sell a five star hotel. We really don't mind. Yeah, we will sell what the customer wants because what it's all about, what it's always been about for, for the last seven years I've been in business, it's actually about putting the customer in control. That is what it's about. The customer decides. The customer says when they book, they decide which bits they book. They can get the paperwork instantly. They are in control. And we are just a, a platform, effectively, from which they choose. And I think that's quite exciting. I don't think people talk enough about actually the customer being controlled. And that's why, you know, people say, are you up market, are you down market? I just, I, I'm every market. I'm actually ne totally neutral, totally neutral. Because when you've got 250,000 hotels on your site, how can you possibly be anything other than neutral? Yeah, it's just not realistic. So th that's our position. There were three or four key decisions that you had to make. First of all, what's currency? Yeah, what's happening on currency? Secondly, what was the fuel? Thirdly, what sort of capacity were you looking at? And I think all of those flow through eventually to margin. You know, there is demand. There's a no question there's demand. The question is, is there demand at sufficient margin? And it's interesting to see the various strategies of the various companies, uh, whether it's product differentiation, which I think is a very valid uh, strategy, which some of the big tour operators are, are, are exercising very successfully, or is it incredible efficiency? which you're starting to see come through from the online players, where, you know, I don't want to touch a booking. I only want to touch a booking by exception. And so the process from, you know, loading to, to, to booking to documentation to the customer experience to, to uh, the, fight, the payment, et cetera, all the way through the process needs to be incredibly, incredibly efficient because the margins don't allow the uh, huge human interface. And I think that's one of the challenges that we have. And uh, how can you harness the technology to allow you to do that? So can you differentiate your product? Can you operate with ruthless efficiency? Um, and, uh, 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 and then clearly, the, the cost of acquisition. You know, Google is the market. You know, do you spend it above the line? Do you spend it on Google? How much repeat business do you get? How much do you invest in search or paid or affiliate marketing? I do think the affiliates are the new travel agents. And I think that you're seeing that in bucket loads at the moment. And that's, in a sense, quite exciting. Um, but you'll never get away from currency demand, whether you know, some of the basic economic factors which drive. And we're fortunate in certainly northern Europe that you've got bad weather. And, and you know, don't underestimate bad weather. You, know, you look at this summer. This summer was driven not by the economy or, or the currency. It was driven by weather. You know, it's as simple as that. And if we, we operate in Scandinavia, we operate in the UK, we operate in Ireland, and all of those have pretty bad weather. And that's driven sales to, to, to a large degree this year outside of obviously your marketing. As a, as a company, it's, uh, it, it's always exciting to get to two million passengers. Um, just some of those, you know, bravado sort of numbers. But, um, you know, one of the highlights was actually receiving the first check when I set up the business. Well, I, I still keep it on my wall. I mean, it sounds silly, it's for £221. But it's just having done 20 years of corporate, 20 something years of corporate, and then to go out and set up your own business. It was, it's, quite a, it's quite a challenge because you, as I said before, you realize what, you soon start to realize what you don't know and what you thought you knew, but what you don't know. And, and that, that's been a journey for me over the last you know, seven, eight years. And to do it at a time when I had, you know, I had kids at the time, and I was, you know, it, it, was, a, it was a difficult period in my life. And, um, and that, that's, been, um, you know, that's been quite a challenge for me. And, uh, and now, I've, now it's quite scary, because you wander around and you see all these people. And you try to know as many as you can, but when you're over 150 staff, you, do, you, you, you just, it's not possible. There are four key things to me in business. One is obviously the staff. I think you've got to have good people. Um, I think the second is you've got to have some good technology. I think the third is, and I'm never quite sure which order, because I came originally from the product side, but actually product and distribution sit hand in hand, because there's no point having great product if you can't distribute it. And if you're distributing poor product, it won't sell. 
So the two have to go hand in hand. And so I literally spend my time going product distribution, product distribution. So yesterday I was on product, today I'm on distribution. And you're switching between those two elements and they absolutely go hand in hand. And to, to be perfectly honest, having spent 30 years in the travel industry and done everything from rep to MD of a big company and then set up my own, there, I, I don't see many people who've done all those bits. People tend to be specialists, and, uh, and so you get a slightly warped view. And I would encourage anybody from big corporate who's listening, remember the bits that you've missed out as you go up through your career, and think about those bits. Because if you ever then come to set up your own business, you'll realize that you don't know those bits. And I had to go away and learn large parts of the industry, because you, you get promoted, in a sense, to the areas you're good at this, you get promoted, but you miss out bits along the way. And I had a huge learning curve, having had a sort of fairly stellar corporate career, to then go and setting up your own and realize the bits. Actually, I wasn't, really didn't know those bits. And I had to go away and learn them. Made some horrendous mistakes as a result of it. But, um, but incredible learning process in, in, in terms of trying to get a rounded view of a business. And I would, uh, I would encourage corporate people to think about that. And I think one of the re really refreshing things is, is, is again, having you know, been, been in the industry for a while, is, is seeing the new blood come in and, uh, and, and new ideas, new energy, and particularly in obviously digital. And I think also to some extent, I spend a lot of time overseas and deal with a lot of overseas suppliers. I talk to, to a lot of hoteliers and suppliers and tourist boards and very on the product side. Uh, and, and really sharing some of that digital experience that you're seeing. Because I think the UK learns from America um, but it's also quite advanced digitally compared to some of the southern Mediterranean countries I'm a, in terms of the way that they distribute digitally. Uh, and, and, and that's, I think, quite exciting. I think we've got, you know, to some extent, first mover advantages. And so we've got to run. Certainly in Europe, we've got to run. And, uh, I think the other interesting thing about technology is it gets copied very quickly. So if you have an advantage, you've got to run. You've got to run like the wind because rest assured there are other people who are out there who are going to copy and replicate and possibly do it better. So you've got to move very, very quickly. And so the motto of my business is hurry up. Yeah, it's always been hurry up. I don't have mission statements. I don't have visions. I don't like any of that. I think that's what I call corporate rubbish. And, and so, 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 you know, what I, what, what I try to sort of cherish with, with the, the team is, first of all, seriously move quickly, um, be bold, don't be scared to, to, if you make a mistake, I don't have a problem people make a mistake. I have a problem people when they don't know they've made a mistake or don't admit it, then I have a problem. But I certainly don't have a problem with somebody making a mistake as long as they fix it, go and fix it. And, um, and I think that that encourages a, a slight entrepreneurial within the business, which is good. And, um, and I like that. I like that. Well, I spent my life traveling. You know, I lived in Africa when I was young in South America. And I spent, obviously, I used to go buying around the world for the big tour operators. So I used to spend 200 days a year. So there, there are a few. There, I still need to go trekking in Mongolia. I need to go and do that. Uh, I, I really want to go and do that. And uh, I really, um, to be honest, I don't mind where I go because I've traveled so much in my life that I could be happy anywhere. It really, really doesn't bother me. I'm more interested who I'm with than where I am. I like history. I like, uh, I, I, I've got three kids, I, so, so I, I, like, I enjoy spending some time with them. We go to football together, like tomorrow, the day after tomorrow I'm going to the football, driving out to Manchester, going to see Manchester United. Um, I read, uh, I like films, I like going out to restaurants. You know, I, like, I quite like going to museums. Um, and I quite like doing nothing. I actually also quite like actually doing nothing. And uh, having moved back up to London, I got rid of my garden and all of those sort of things. I got rid of all those interests. And, um, and lying on the beach can be fun too. Lying on the beach can be fun, but so, you know, I was wandering around last night at midnight in Malta looking at all these fantastic churches outside this restaurant in M Mossaid, I think it was called, and it was just absolutely beautiful. I mean, really stunning. And, um, and I think it's a variety, variety, yeah.